Thank you very much, and uh, I am really delighted and honored to be here. And to be frank, I'm sweating bullets with this audience here and all the wonderful presentations before me that are going to be impossible for me to follow. So I'm going to take off my jacket, if that's okay, and, um, and launch into showing you what, what we think we've developed as a, a very sustainable method to, uh, to, to sustain our, our memories, our collective human memories. Um, as James said, we, uh, I wanted to start with my, with my uh, origins. Uh, old Nineveh is, uh, is, is the site of uh, Mosul, uh, where I was born. Uh, and um, this picture, and I'm not going to show you family albums this afternoon, it's, this picture uh, just reminds me of how my father used to hold my hand and take me to uh, see the Nineveh ruins and tell me all the wonderful stories about how the gates of that metropolis were guarded by giant uh, winged bulls, how they wrote on uh, clay tablets, and how they built uh, a great metropolis on the Tigris River. These memories stayed with me uh, and remain, and uh, I was very fortunate to come to the United States uh, to pursue my graduate work. And after that, I started an engineering company that did a lot of work on nuclear power plants, among other things and uh, discovered the horror of sending engineers in there to document uh, pipes and equipment and so forth, uh, uh, fraught with the danger of, of being in radiation environments and so forth, very expensive and time-consuming uh, processes. I um, uh, started a company right after my engineering company got acquired, um, a technology company, with the mission of uh, bringing to the world a non tactile laser-based technology that hopefully would give uh, engineers um, and owners of, of facilities in the construction industry uh, a method that was faster, cheaper, and more accurate. Um, our uh, mantra was an order of magnitude improvement in uh, technology and, and in the acquisition of technology. Uh, the system was uh, based on um, lasers that uh, were pulsed lasers. It worked uh, more like a, a LIDAR or radar. Uh, I don't see this um, uh, image. Um, there we go. Okay. So you can imagine this is called a cloud of points. Uh, and each point in, in this uh, cloud that you see represents a point on the surface that's down to a millimeter or two in accuracy and a millimeter or so uh, in uh, in um, resolution. Uh, my company uh, was acquired in 2001 by uh, Leica Geosystems, and my wife and I started a foundation uh, there with uh, one of the aims being to uh, try to use the technology and uh, in, in preserving heritage. Uh, right at about that time, the Taliban um, did a, a, a horrible act uh, in, in, on the Buddhas in, in Bamiyan. And uh, that brought our mission to a, a higher um, a level of intensity. We decided to uh, start a pilot project to see how we might accelerate using that technology for heritage preservation. Um, we, we started imagining how a cloud of points might look like um, it, it taking Tikal as, as, a, as an area that, that uh, would be scanned and would be available to children in K through 12, to conservators, uh, to, and to others who are interested in uh, cultural travel. Um, we uh, imagined how the cloud of points could be used uh, to capture the Anasazi dwellings in Colorado at Mesa Verde and um, to also um, be able to capture wonderful Egyptian temples in Luxor. 
And as you can see here, these are all clouds of points um, that are made up of literally hundreds of millions of points uh, that, um, that are taken during, during the scans. And I'll show you uh, a little bit later on um, a little bit more about how, how the whole process works. Um, I'm, 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 there we go. I think that slide, we, we're having some technical difficulties in here. I, I told you about that acquisition. Um, and it, it was clear that the, uh, after the Bamiyan Buddhas were blown up and, and the earthquake at, uh, at Bam, it was clear that, uh, we felt at least, that there would not be a, a possible means of conserving heritage physically, uh, all the heritage in the world physically. We can do some, but it's, it's not sustainable to, to, to try to do all of that heritage um, and, and sustain it for humanity uh, in the future. Um, so with, with our foundation, <clears throat> uh, which we began in 2003, uh, we uh, developed we leveraged the, the order of magnitude technology for reality capture um, and leveraged it with additional tools that allowed us with computer graphics and, and the internet to uh, develop a methodology which we called, uh, we, we, call, we call it today digital preservation. And you will see why in a minute uh, as I get into the website that uh, uh, that we've uh, put in all this wonderful media in. Uh, the, the pilot project uh, through, through uh, a, a, a group of partners all over the world, about 60 of them, owners of, uh, of sites, um, major universities, as well as service providers, um, we were able to digitally preserve about 20 major sites all over the world. And that's all in our website, which is at sciarc.org, and my hope is that you get interested enough to visit it and, and enjoy the fantastic media that is there. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough time to, <clears throat> to go through um, and, and, and do justice to the entire website, but uh, one of my favorite projects is PISA, and I'll just take you through some of the images there. The, um, Needless to say, Google's map came in uh, extremely handy to show where our projects are. And as you'll see as I zoom in into the PISA site, I will arrive at the city. And as I get close, I can enter the site. And once I enter the site, uh, I have a large um, lar large amount of information and media to, to take advantage of, but again, in the interest of brevity, I just want to show you the type of media that's there. It ranges all the way from 3D clouds of points uh, that one can view on the web, uh, all the way to engineering and architectural drawings uh, that conservators uh, and others can study and use, all the way to um, panoramas and high-definition photography, uh, as well as um, uh, videos of, um, of clouds of points that allow you to fly through. Uh, one of my favorite uh, objects there is a 3D model that was, believe it or not, created on Google SketchUp. SketchUp and just a, a wonderful tool that allowed us, that allowed the, the creation of that. Um, actually, one of the coolest um, things or features in the website is a 3D viewer that allows you to view the cloud of points online. Uh, in, in essence, it allows you to take that cloud of points and spin it around, view it, as well as cut sections through it and dimension it. Imagine using this in sixth grade class teaching geometry, um, teaching culture, and teaching history. At this point, having succeeded with, the, with our pilot project, um, we have decided to take advantage of 
the technology that we've developed and the partnership that we have cast, in addition to uh, a, a very interesting approach as to how to create true sustainability through uh, transferring the technology locally, uh, which is through technology centers all over the world. And so we are starting on a major initiative shortly to digitally preserve 500 of the top World Heritage Sites in the next five years. This might seem daunting, um, and it would be if it wasn't for the technology that we've developed and the partnerships that we have cast. There are over, I believe, over a thousand surveyors all over the world who have the technology and are very interested in being involved with us. In addition, uh, we are finding more and more of the multinationals who are learning about this, being interested in doing good in locales that they operate in, uh, where they get the benefit of doing um, the economy good by establishing technology centers and by preserving the culture. More importantly, to support a, a, a great uh, effort to uh, sustain our, what I call, our heritage uh, and our, um, uh, and our um, memories, our hu collective human memories. Um, while, we, while I was speaking, and a little before that, actually a demonstration was uh, taking place in scanning this hall, and I want to ask the wizard behind the black curtain to show you the work that uh, he had be, been doing while we've been talking. That is you, gentlemen and ladies, um, in this hall, um, having been scanned. And you, you can see the power of this technology, how fast it is, and what kind of details it, it can create. Um, I'm going to ask him to zero in and zoom in on someone who you're very familiar with. And you can make out the facial, features here. Um, th thank you, James, for being patient. And I want to thank you all for giving me this opportunity. And my hope is that we can all spread the word. Thank you.